wasn't the video about the making of the game. Yes, sure, let me fix this. When we started, we didn't even know what to do. With only a rough idea in mind, we immediately got to work on the basic mechanics. We only knew that the game was going to be a vertical scrolling platformer for mobile. We supposed uh, we could add features along the way, but uh, it wasn't the case, and a considerable amount of problems emerged during the development. At that time, we were a team of two. Me, Daniele, more into graphics and game design, and Alessio, more into the technical stuff. We proceeded smoothly for a while, but then the scope of the project grew and the lack of coding and art skills had the better of us. We were also using Unity Collaborate, so you are the judge of that. Yeah, my coding skills uh, were not good enough, so I decided to start a course about Unity and coding. There I met a lot of people and improved my skills, but uh, it was very time consuming and soon I was too busy to work on it. So, we decided to put our project in standby. When we finally decided to go back and work on the project again, four months passed. With new and better skills, we decided that the old project was not good enough and we started from scratch again. We also had a better understanding of working in Unity and decided to make a game design document, use a game plan to organize tasks and uh, started a GitHub repository along with Fork for uh, safety and version control. And that's how you should do it, if you're asking. The rework of the project was going smoothly until we started adding features. The game was to become a simple vertical scrolling platform. In order to progress, you needed to feed the carnivore plant some food you found on the level. But uh, why not improve the food by mixing it? Why not have some AI enemies roaming up and down the level? Why not add some destructible elements? Why not... Uh, you got the idea. Woo, so now I can cook recipes in your game. Um, not really, you little chef. Now you can cook chicken into... Cooked chicken. Where is the advanced cooking, you might ask? We are still working on it. The initial idea was to insert in the game multiple machineries, but we soon realized there were too many and it was getting a little confusing. So we decided to simplify everything into a single machine, the oven, and to cancel the others, but all this happened in months of suffering. At the end of the summer, we decided to take some decisions, or the game would have been a mess. So, we wanted to define our target audience. There were basically two possible outcomes. A bitmap game, almost without cooking mechanics, with combos, bosses, enemies and all that stuff. Or, a game with the more complex cooking dynamics. And, uh, obviously, we made a mix of the two, again but maybe it was the right choice this time. Before getting to the actual situation, in order not to give up the potentiality of having unique and original mechanics in the game, we planned to have different types of levels. I know, it's getting a little confusing. Hold on. The player then would have the possibility to choose which one to play, based uh, on their preferences. Another possibility we considered was the implementation of an endless vault, where the player could grind items and new records. Yes, very cool, very cool indeed, but uh, there was a very small problem. The game wasn't simple anymore. Also, to support all those different features and mechanics, the code architecture and design had to be way sturdier than it was at that time. Not having started designing the game with all those features in mind, meant that the core design of the mechanics from a technical point of view was uh, not adequate to be built upon. If you will follow this channel you will be hearing about code scalability and root software engineering a lot. I personally overlooked them for a very long time but those are the premises for a well designed and uh, almost bug free game. Have you given up on all those features then? 
Not really, but uh, we still have a long way to go before even starting working on them. How do you test a mechanic, you might ask? I don't want to waste my time making a fortress of code just to realize that my game design concept sucks. If you ever ask yourself something like this, my answer is uh, prototype. Make a shitty code in a shitty different project, just to test out all those uh, ideas your game designer has. Then, once you've tested and chosen the best and most fun one, go and implement it in the project. Trust me, it's a bit more time consuming, but uh, it's way better than starting from scratch on your main project over and over again. Oh, I got carried away. Where were we? Oh yes, for Escape Plant we didn't prototype and we paid the price. The feature equip took control over our project. We were dealing with the famous SPAGHETTI CODE because we are Italians of course and it was very frustrating. So, for the second time, we decided to start again. This time we reworked all code and graphics to the point you saw at the beginning of the video. Please, please, don't make the same error yourself. I know that uh, a lot of game devs out there have already said this, but uh, Start with a clear game idea and stick with it. It's crucial to know, before starting, the target and people's preferences. Maybe we will think about it in the future, and an entire video can be made about that. Another fundamental thing to do is to narrate your progress, in particular if you are developing a mid-core game. A mid-core game is basically a game that has a niche of players that are really in love with that genre and they will probably follow your social medias from the beginning to the end of the project. So, almost at the beginning of our journey, we created an Instagram page on which we posted some pixel arts and we had the possibility to talk with really amazing people and also to participate in some way in their projects. The game dev community, by the way, is awesome. Dive into it and you will not regret your choice. In order to have some sort of success on social media platforms, you must be consistent with your content drops and have your content planned in advance. We are not good planners, as you could have guessed, and we alternated short active periods on the platform to long inactive periods. The creation of online contents took away more time than expected because you want to show good stuff, obviously. Because you want to show good stuff obviously, and this impacted our consistency in it. Chances are that if you are still watching this video, you are a game developer yourself. So do you want to be a successful game developer? We are not qualified to tell you what to do, and uh, as you can tell, the scope of this video is basically to tell you what you shouldn't do. And even if you manage to avoid all our mistakes, it is probably still not going to be enough. Game dev is hard and learning all the skills you need to succeed is no easy task either. The market is flooded with games, standing out is not that simple. We, as Love72, sincerely hope this video inspired you some way, or at least made you smile at our failures. If so, consider subscribing.